Building effects in Onyx is a great way to get something much more exciting than just static individual cues, right? Where, you know, you're just playing a color, position, you know, nice things that we've learned about and they look nice, but sometimes you want some movement across any of your parameters within your lights. So it might be intensity, might be color, might be position, etc. Inside of Onyx, there's kind of three main ways to do that right now. And depending on the outcome you're trying to get, you'll use a different method to get there. So the first is just effects themselves, okay? Using the effects engine in Onyx, which is what we're gonna do in this video. Next video, we're gonna cover chases, which are a different type of effect, which sometimes the result you're looking for is gonna be easiest to get through a chase. And then lastly, we're gonna talk about Dylos, which is the pixel mapping engine inside Onyx. And if that makes your eyes gloss over, please don't let it do that because it can do some really incredible things that can really make your next event very interesting. And we're gonna talk about some of those basics there. Okay, so effects in Onyx. It's a pretty simple process. I've got a queue playing right now and we're gonna keep it up. Actually, I'm gonna to go to my first queue, I like it better. And so we've got our queue here. And so say we want to run some effects on our lights, either within a larger queue stack in a theatrical style setting or church, or we wanna put something else on a different playback for just some live mixing. Regardless, effects in Onyx record and work just like regular cues. The only difference is we tap into the effects section of the controls to be able to have things moving. So I'll just go ahead and grab my darts 360s here. And we'll, we'll click here on intensity and then go over to effects. So this is key. The way that Onyx works is you have these primary parameters here, which are the things your lights all have. And this is gonna be the same on the control surface of the consoles as well, where you'll have intensity, pan, tilt, color, um, all the parameter groups that apply to that light are gonna show up here. And then we have some ways to modify them in the second section. So effects and effects timing are what we're going over in this video but we also have the ability to fan, to use the grouping tools here. And then we also have some global rates, which actually aren't really the same thing at all. Okay, so when we go from intensity and we've got our output selected here, we know that because it's got this white box around it. It also tells us right here that we're, that we're selecting intensity right now. Okay, intensity within the intensity group. See if I go here, it tells me strobe. So we have what we want selected. And then we're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna bring them to 50%, and then we go over to effects. So now it tells me that we're working on intensity with the effect. Swing is how much the effect modifies the light. So I was at 50%, I'm gonna do 100% swing, and then I'm gonna dial in a speed. Speed should be pretty self-explanatory given that it's how fast something goes, right? So we grab a speed we like and we see, okay, you know, here we've got the lights, they're moving on intensity, they've got an effect running. Looks nice, but you know, we don't want it to do all the lights at the same time, right? Rarely is that what you actually want in an effect. Okay, so for that, we go over here to effects timing, and we have two options, we have wave and we have step. Wave basically spreads the effect out across all of the lights. So I have 12 lights here, and it gives me the quick option here of 12. And when I spread that out among 12, you can see the effect is spread exactly across those 12 lights. If I modify that, say to six, now the effect happens twice across my selection of lights at the same time. So every six lights, it's basically spreading that effect out and then it goes to the next six. Step is gonna be a little bit different. You don't do wave and step together, they're individual. So whichever one you've selected most recently is what's actually getting recorded. Step, if I set that to 12, you'll see one light runs the effect at a time and then it goes to the next light. So this is really helpful for chasing type effects that are a little step different from a chase, which we'll talk about in the next video. It can be useful. I can tell you, I use it less often than I use the actual effect, but sticking with smaller numbers, for example, we'll do like four out of 12 here, you can get an effect that might be exactly what you're looking for. For example, a step of four here, you can see how that looks, kind of how the lights come up and down and the rest are paused which is a little different, a little more jarring, I wanna say, than a wave of four, where the four lights have the effect spread across them, but they're doing them all at the same time. 
So step is a little more, I mean, it's it's steps, right? Where step one, step two, step three, step four, um, as opposed to a fluid movement through one through four. Once we get the effect looking how we like it, we can go ahead and press record and place it on a playback. Now, you could put these within regular cues with other parameters and, and just play it back as part of a cue for part of a song, part of a musical, part of a play, wh whatever type of lighting you're doing. But you can also put them in as overrides, which in my opinion, makes them a lot more powerful. So we've got the override there. It's rocking and rolling, it's happy. And so the cool thing about an override is we can bring it in nice and smooth. And if we just move the effect a little bit, you see now the effect is happening, but it's kind of slow and it's not moving the full swing. It's not doing the full amount or the full depth or resolution of the effect. As we move it up, it gets faster and we can adjust that on the fly with an override. That's why we really like overrides and they're awesome for effects when you're running lights live to music. These are great for all sorts of music. If you're running music, you definitely want to use overrides. Let's go ahead and build another effect. So one that we get questions about a lot are pan tilt effects. So we'll just grab our lights again, go to pan tilt and go to effects. Pan tilt effects look a little bit different because by default they're combined, which makes a lot of sense. You often would want to do a pan and tilt effect together. So if we just do, you know, a little bit, say 25% on each, we now have a speed control. You can see they're moving. And we also have a figure control, which shows us how X and Y work together to make the desired effect. Of course, like usual, we'll want to use effects timing. And I'm going to do three here out of my 10 fixtures. That's going to give me kind of an asymmetrical, really cool look, look out of my lights. If you are in effects and you want to work with your pan and tilt separately, you can do that as well. Sometimes that makes more sense. And you just go here to effects, to effects mode and turn pan tilt combo off. Now, if I edit this further, I'm working only with pan as it tells me right here. And so now I could go and I could adjust the pan much, you know, much larger. I could adjust the speed separately from the tilt speed and get something entirely different. Or I could work with just pan or just tilt and not affect the other one, which is a more likely case. As you can see, our figure here, you know, has gotten all kinds of crazy because, you know, that's what we did. If you like it, again, we can record this to an override similar as we did before, record it in a regular queue. There are lots of options of how to use the effect. There are also pre-built effects that can help a lot. So if I'm gonna clear everything and go back to my, let's go to my darts 360s. And then we can go to this window called effects program. The pre-built effects are in this yellow or orange tab. And they are just simple effects without effects timing that you can play across your lights. So you select it and you see, okay, now my lights are running that effect. I'm just gonna speed it up a little so it's more apparent. And then you would just apply effects timing and you're off to the races. Record that anywhere you want. You can also record effects that you've built back into this bank. You just press record and press it into the effects macros. These pre-built effects macros, again, don't contain effects timing. It's just the information for one fixture per se, so that you're able to apply it to one fixture, to five, to 10, to three, to six, to eight, to any amount you want. You can also store effects with effects timing into presets, regular presets in Onyx as well. Some useful effects macros also are the off macros. These can be helpful if you wanna stop effects from cues, maybe set up a button to do so, and do that independently of actually stopping the, the cue that you fired it on. This can be really helpful in a lot of busking situations, and it's always a good idea to just store a off cue for your various different types of effects. The off cue basically just brings the swing to zero. It's different and better generally than bringing the speed to zero. Those are the basics of effects in Onyx. Let's dive into our next video where we're gonna talk about chases, what they are, what they do, and why you might use them over an effect. Thanks.